This is the asynchronous version here of Algebra 2 Notes. Gonna get this up on YouTube. And if you need any of the 10.3 homework problems done, uh, I'll be making that YouTube video uh, during the asynchronous day. So send me those requests for 10.3 problems and I'll get those solved um, in a walkthrough video I'll be posting later on on um, Wednesday. So uh, here for 10.4, um, we've moved on from multiplication and division on to addition and subtraction. So, uh, so I actually want to start off just with some general kind of notes and examples here. So the first one is you want, you can kind of, when adding and subtracting um, radicals, um, think of radicals kind of like variables. So for instance, um, you can combine things if they both have an X, you can, you can like combine them. Uh, similarly, if they both have a radical that's the same radical, then you can combine them. Um, kind of hard to explain, so let's just see it in action here. So the example from the book, which I think is a perfectly good example, is we've got 6 times the square root of 11, and that's minus 2 times the square root of 11. So we can combine them. We can pull out the 6 and the 2, and we can make that a separate 6 minus 2 times the square root of 11. So in that case, like it's very similar if we had 6x minus 2x, then we could make that 6 minus 2x, and that would be the same thing over here. That's just 4, right? 6 minus 2 is just 4. Um, 4 times the square root of 11. So that's combining like terms. Combining like terms is also done for radicals, but it has to be the same radical. So you can't like have like the square root of six and the square root of 11 or something like that. Like this worked because they were both the square root of 11. So, you know, don't, d don't be adding and subtracting together groups of separate radicals. You want to make sure that you're doing the same radical. In this case, the radical we're dealing with here is the square root of 11. Um, looking at a few more of the examples here, um, there can be quite a bit of complexity to some of these. So, um, for example, if you have three times the square root of eight plus the square root of two. This is another one of the examples from chapter 10.4 in the book. Um, then it looks like they're not the same radical, right? Square root of eight, square root of two, not the same radical. However, you can simplify. So you want to simplify it. That's, that's what we worked on in chapter 10.3 was simplifying. And you can see if maybe that you can make it in a way that it is the same radical, that they do have the same radical. So in this case, square root of 2, you can't simplify because 2 is prime, so you can't factor it any more than that. 8, however, is 2 times 2 times 2. And so that can be simplified. So we have square root of... 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 squared times 2, square root of 2, and we can pull that 2 out, because the square root and the squared cancel. So 8 is, I should probably, so that's where that came from. So we factored the 8, and we got 2 cubed, which is just 2 squared times another 2. So we can separate the 2 squared and the extra 2 out. And square root of 2 squared is just 2. So that makes the 6 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. And then we can factor out the square root of 2 from both of those to get 7 square root of 2, which makes sense, right? Here we have 6 square root 2s 
plus another one. So that's seven square root of two. That, that, so that checks out logically there. So initially it looked like we didn't have the same radical. It looked like we had square root of eight and square root of two, which are different. But we were able to simplify and we were able to make it so that they were both square root of two. So you want to check um, in this homework assignment, it does say if it's possible, add and subtract the radicals. All right, that's what it says for numbers 15 through 31. It says if possible, add or subtract the radical expressions. So you have to factor it and see if it's possible. If you can factor it down so that they have the same radical, then you can add or subtract them. Um, if you can't factor them down to the same radical, then you can't add or subtract them. Um, uh, first example I want to look at is the first homework problem. Birds are really excited about math. And that's number 15. So the first one simply says 3 times the square root of 5 plus 6 times the square root of 5. Oops. And we can pull the 3 and the 6 out of that, factor it. Factor the square root of 5 out of both of those terms. And we get 3 plus 6 times the square root of 5, which is 9 times the square root of 5. So that one could be added together. Um, so let's look at one that's not a square root. We're pretty comfortable with square roots. Those are the most common one. Let's go to 21 here. 21 says the fourth root, we haven't dealt with that much, the fourth root of 3 plus 7 times the fourth root of 3 minus the fourth root of 14. So we have to check and see, can we get a fourth root of 3 out of the fourth root of 14? And I wrote that wrong again, not on a roll today. I haven't made one of these videos in a while, so I'm stumbling around a little bit. This is my first math video, but here we go. Um, so, obviously we're looking for fourth root of three because that's what we have in both of the first two terms. So let's see what we can make out of 14. We've got two, we've got seven, uh, no threes, and we can't really reduce it more than that. We can get down to a two and a seven, but we certainly don't have four of anything. Um, so there's nothing we can do with that. Uh, fourth root of 14 is kind of stuck. We can't simplify it. So we can add the four, first two together, right? We can get 8 times the fourth root of 3, because we know that. But then this fourth root of 14 here is left out hanging. We can't do anything with it. It's, it's as simplified as it can get, really. We can make it fourth root of 2 times fourth root of 7, but that's that's not helping us any that's not helping us add or subtract together so so that's as simple as it gets so that's an example of when when it can't be added and subtracted together um and let's take a look here so while we're at it let's go with eight square root of x plus two square root of y minus six square root of x. So what can we do about adding and subtracting that together? Well, we've got to find like terms. So first thing we can see is square root of x there. So 8 square root of x minus 6 square root of x we can look at together. And then there's still that 2y, 2 square root of y there. That's a. We have 8 minus 6 square root of x, and the 2 root y is still out there, haven't done anything with that. This is 2 root x plus 2 root y, root y. There we go. So um, we can combine like terms. So not, not only can we combine the roots, we can combine the twos as well, right? We can pull a two out of both of these. We can get two times root x plus root y. Um, not super necessary, but, you know, if we want it all to be together as one, one group, 
then then we could do that. So I would definitely take that. In my opinion, it's most simplified. Whoa, dang it. So yeah, I would take that. But I would also take this. That's also fine. So let's move on to uh, the next chunk of problems here. Um, I want to look at number 35. The trick is to simplify the radicals and then try to add them together. So we've got square root of 36 plus the square root of 81. For these ones, feel free to, to just look at the positives. I mean, we know square roots can be plus or minus right, so technically these could have like four different answers, um, but we only have a couple weeks left to get through all of this stuff. I don't need to make you do each problem four different times for all the plus minus combinations, so you could just keep it positive. So square root of 36 is 6, square root of 81 is 9, we've got 15. But just to make sure you remember what I'm talking about with a plus or minus, any square root could be positive or negative. So this could have also been negative 6 plus 9, which would be 3. This could have also been negative 6 plus a negative 9, which would have been negative 15. And it could have also been positive 6 plus negative 9, which would have equaled negative 3. So technically, any of those are possible answers. But for the sake of time here, for, the, for all of these square roots we're going to be dealing with here in, in these chapters, uh, I'm okay if you stick with the positives um, for, for simplifying. So that's okay. That's acceptable. So, uh, but I'm not just going to circle that because I want to reinforce that any of these are technically correct. So they all get circled. All right. Next example, number 51. Number 51 says 5p times the square root of 20p squared plus p squared times the square root of 80. All right, so right away I see a square root and a square, so I know that can be taken care of. So 5p, ah, my tablet's being a little cranky right now. Okay, it's being really cranky. When the square root and the p squared cancel out, that gives us regular p. The squared and the square root just balance out. Uh, so the 20 is still left in the square root there. Nothing's happened to the square root of 20. It's just the p squared part that's canceled out. And over here we have p squared times the square root of 80. 5p squared and p squared. Let's simplify these radicals. So we need to factor. So 20 is 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5. Those are both prime. We can't go any further than that. 80 is 2 times 40, which is 2 times 20, which is 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5. Can't go any further than that. You can see that 20 is in both of them, so we could, have, we could stop there. Because on, honestly, we could just look at this as 20, and this one as 2 times 2 times 20. Right, 2 times 2 times 20, which is you know, 4 times 20. Square root of 20 here is just square root of 20, and you'll see where I'm going with this here in just a second. Square root of 80 is 4 times 20. Square root of 4 times 20, because 80 is just 4 times 20. Square root of 4 is 2. If we're just looking at positives, well, because we know all the plus and minus, all that good stuff, yes, I, we've drilled that in but it's going to take forever if we have to do plus or minus on all of these square roots this chapter. So for these chapters only, now that I've fully convinced you that square roots are plus or minus, for this chapter only, you can keep it positive. That's totally fine. And for chapter 11 as well, I should say, for the rest of the semester here. The rest of the semester here, um, you can keep your square roots positive. Let's keep it simple. Um, I'll let you know if on like the final or something, if it's a problem where you need plus or minus, if you need both of the options for a square root, I will let you know. But for the rest of the semester, square roots can be positive. Just remember that that's not necessarily the complete truth. That this is the complete truth. We're just keeping it simple. Okay, back to this. 
So the square root of four here is two. So we can pull out that we can say two here instead of square root of four. P squared is still P squared, and we got the square root of 20. Now we've got square root of 20 in both numbers. These are both just two numbers added together here. So we've got a square root of 20 in both numbers. We've got a P squared in both numbers. So we've got five plus two P squared square root of 20. Right, because we've got five of them here and two of them here, so we add them together. So overall, we have seven p squared root 20s. So 51 was a good one to look at there. We got a lot going on. So just again, you got to remember to simplify your radicals. Simplify your radicals, and if you can add them together, if you get the same, if you get the same radicals in, in all your numbers, you can add them together. If you get your same radical, like in 23, in some of the numbers, then you can add those numbers together, but not the other ones. So our square root X numbers we could combine, but not our square root Y numbers. That's an and uh, same thing here, right? We had different radicals. We couldn't get them. We couldn't get the same one. This fourth root of 14 over here, we couldn't, we couldn't mesh with the fourth root of three. So um, we just left it where it was couldn't do anything with it so let's let's practice a little bit more 63 was one i have circled i want to look at so here's number 63 minus 2 cube root 27x and plus cube root of 54x cubed So right away again, I see a, a good place to start is a cube root of x cubed. Cubed and cube root cancel out. So I'm just going to do that right away. So that, we haven't changed that yet. I haven't changed that yet. And this becomes x cube root 54 because the cube root and the cubed on the x cancel out. All right. Now let's simplify our radical. So factor 16 to the fourth. 27 is 3. Gives 3 cubed. 3 threes multiplied together gives us 27. 54. 54 is 2 times 3 cubed. It's just twice as big as, as 27. So, and this was cube root. That was my fault there. So x times the cube root of 2 to the 4th minus 2 times the cube root 3 cubed x plus x times the cube root of 2 times 3 cubed. All right, so remember when we have things multiplied together, we can separate them into their own pieces. So 2 to the 4th is just 2 times 2 to the 3rd. 3 cubed cube root, the cube and cube root undo, so you just get regular 3. But x is still under the cube root there, still the cube root of x. Same thing over here. The 3 cubed cube root cancels itself out, but then we still have that cube root of 2. That 2 hasn't gone anywhere. So now the cube root and the cubed can cancel out, and we get that 2. It's kind of like it's kind of like getting out of radical jail there. This is the this is how many you need to get out. So we so this one could get out, but this 2 is left behind. So that 2 is left behind in the cube root there. Cube root of 2 minus 6 times the cube root of x, that hasn't gone anywhere, plus 3x times the cube root of 2. So the only ones we can really combine are these cube root of 2 ones here. Or we could combine, well, actually not or, sorry, and x. They both have x. So they, these both have x times the cube root of 2. So we have two x root twos and three x root twos. So x root two 
And we still have six cube root of X's. Those haven't gone anywhere either. For a total of five X times the cube root of two minus six times the cube root of X. And that's as far as we can go. Right, because now we have different radicals. We have cube root of two over here, cube root of X over here. Can't, can't mesh those. They're completely different radicals. Again, got a factor in order to simplify our radicals. That helped us see that we could get a three out of here, a three out of here, and a two out of here. So you can't say, nope, those are all different radicals. We've got a 16, a 27x, and a 54. Obviously, the x is going to be different because there's, there's only, it's the only place we had a cube root of x. But the numbers, we had other cubes we could pull out of the cube root. And then we were actually able to combine a couple of them. So you've got to use factoring, just like you did here, to simplify cube roots. Um, so now let's look at 71. The sum of the principal square root of 48 and the principal square root of 12. So square root of 48 plus square root of 12. So let's factor. And that's as far as we need to go. We got to 12. So 48 is ah, got that my way. 2 times 2 times 12 or 4 times 12. So square root of 4 times 12 plus the square root of 12. Well, square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 12 plus the square root of 12. And that gives us 3 square roots of 12, right? If we have 2 of them and we add another one, it gives us 3. So square root of 48 plus the square root of 12 is just 3 times the square root of 12. Again, factoring helped us figure that out, but once we got once we got to a common radical factor here, both of these are square root of 12. Once we found our common ground, we could stop. We didn't have to go any further. So that's a nice little shortcut there. That'll save you some time. And finally, let's look at a geometry problem together. Uh, number 81 wants us to find the value of x, where x is part of this rectangle. So pretend this is actually a rectangle. Pretend I can draw. This side is square root of 50 feet. This is x feet. And it tells us that the perimeter is 14 root 2. So perimeter equals 14 root 2 feet. So what is the perimeter? Perimeter is the whole way around. So there's two x's on the right and on the left, and there's two root 50s, top and bottom. So we can start there. 2x plus 2 root 50 equals 14 times the square root of 2. So let's divide everything by 2 first. So we get x plus square root of 50 equals 7 times the square root of 2. And 14 divided by 2 is just 7. So some of you may have been tempted there to divide this square root of 2 by 2 as well and make it like the square root of 1 or something. So our radicals are separate. Think of it like x, right? So the, the coefficient here is what hits the 2. 2 two is just a regular old number. 14 is just a regular number. So 14 is what gets divided by 2. Just like x over here, 2x divided by 2 is just x. x plus 50 equals 7 times the square root of 2. We need to figure out what x is. Right, solve for x. That's always what algebra wants us to do. So let's subtract the square root of 50. We know the square root of 50 is positive because it's a distance. You can't have a, a pool with a negative perimeter. Right, you can't have, can't have a shape with negative square root of 50 feet. It doesn't make any sense. So we know everything's positive here. So now we need to factor 50 to figure out what its primes are. So 5 times 25, which is 5 times 5, so 2 times 5 squared. So x equals 7 minus square root of 2 times 5 squared. And square root of 5 squared, the squared and square root cancel out. 
So we get x equals 7 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 2. So we pull that 5 out of the square root because it's squared. So the square and the square root cancel out. So then we get 7 minus 5 square root of 2s, which gives us 2 square root 2 feet because it's a shape, right? That, the units are feet there. Don't forget your units. Uh, that's it for the 10.4 lesson. Um, make sure you do the check-in form to get attendance for the day. Um, we'll be available office hours from 9 to 11 and from 1 to 5. Just send me a message. If you need help with anything, we can work together. Um, I can do a few more examples with you, whatever you need. Um, just remember to uh, simplify radicals. Factoring can help. Right, factoring can help because you can find things like this that tell you, hey, there's a five squared in there that we can pull out and leave the two behind. So factoring is is going to help you avoid getting stuck here for um, a lot of these square root problems. So let me know if you get stuck. The three minute rule right applies. If you're stuck on something for more than three minutes, let me help you get unstuck and have an awesome asynchronous day.